So I'm Mike Godsey, and I um, was first introduced to adaptive sports, wheelchair basketball, 14 years ago when my son, who was seven at the time, uh, found out about a local wheelchair basketball team and an adaptive sports program. Uh, I got involved as a coach at the time, and a couple years later, myself and the three other dads decided to start a nonprofit to help other individuals that have physical disabilities with travel expenses, equipment expenses. And uh, that organization is called Abilities Unlimited of the Carolinas. Wheelchair basketball is uh, certainly my passion. It's uh, the one that I've helped coach for a number of years. And um, I'm the coach in the juniors program. So our youngest player is currently five years old. And our uh, oldest players in the junior division go up through senior, senior year in high school. Uh, we're proud because our organization allows individuals to, to find their inner athlete. Um, because they, they happen to be in wheelchairs, but really the, the key and the common goal is, is that they, they're athletes. We've sent uh, nine different athletes to Division I colleges through the years to play in adaptive tra track and field or basketball. We sell our apparel and, and gear, pretty much anything where we can bring awareness and, and help raise money because insurance companies don't help participate in buying any of the adaptive equipment. and. Uh, the chair itself cost uh, close to $2,000, sometimes more than that, sometimes as much as six or $7,000. So, you know, we have to travel. We're the only team uh, in, the, in the Carolinas that has a prep team, which is 12 and younger. And there's only uh, two other high school age teams in the Carolinas. So our conference uh, goes, stretches from Jackson, Mississippi, to the Eastern Seaboard up into Virginia, uh, through Nashville, and it has the Carolinas, Florida, uh, Georgia and Alabama. So we have to travel a lot. Our adult wheelchair basketball team uh, is comprised of males and females, men and women, and what they try and do is they want to get involved in a sport. And wheelchair basketball is a, is a very popular sport that, that they can get involved in. The range of disabilities that people on our adult team, some of them have lifelong uh, disabilities they were born with, like uh, spina bifida, uh, cerebral palsy, some of them, it's a result of an accident or injury that's occurred at some point in their life. Uh, sometimes in their youth, but many times it happens during their adult life, where they've been in a motorcycle accident, maybe they have had a gunshot wound, maybe they uh, have battled a uh, illness or injury like uh, cancer that's it's created a situation where they're not able to walk anymore. So the adult team, they practice uh, twice a week right now, Monday evenings and Wednesday evenings. Uh, the, Monday evening activities are at a church in South Charlotte. The Wednesday evening is at a, one of the county rec centers, kind of just off of South Boulevard. And, you know, this is after a day long of work for most of our athletes, where they, you know, they wake up, they have a family, they might have children, and, but then, you know, it's a sport they love, so on Monday and Wednesdays, they come and practice. Okay, my name's Tim Caldwell. playing wheelchair basketball for about uh, 10, 11 years now. Um, started off playing in Charlotte uh, for the end of Charlotte Rowan uh, Bobcats. And uh, actually played for uh, several years there before going to the University of Texas in Arlington on a full athletic scholarship. We played at UTA for three years as a collegiate wheelchair basketball player. Um, and I've been back in Charlotte uh, ever since that, um, playing for the Royal Hornets. I was uh, injured about 12 years ago after a car accident and um, basically just fainted at the wheel and drove off an overpass and just the impact um, severed uh, my vertebrae and severed my spinal cord and just left me paralyzed from the chest and stomach down. Wheelchair basketball for me, I mean, I've been, I'm from North Carolina, and basketball's always been a passion for me. I love it. I've uh, been a Tar Heel fan my whole life, so, uh, you know, it's in my blood. And the, the main thing that wheelchair basketball does is, for one thing, it gives me an outlet, you know, it's a way to kind of get my competitive
juices flowing the way I did before. I mean, I was an athlete before I was injured, so naturally I, I need some kind of outlet to get that out, and um, that's what it provides. But the other thing it does is it kind of gives me a way to, uh, to have kind of a fellowship with other guys like me you know, in the same situation. And guys that, that really understand kind of what I'm going through, where able bodies don't necessarily have that perspective, um, you know, understand the, you know, just the whole stigma of being in a chair and, and the things we face day to day, just the challenges and stuff. I, mean, I can tell somebody about it, but unless you're really in the situation, it's hard, it's hard to fully understand. So, you know, there's kind of a camaraderie on the team where we, we all have our own story, our own tragic situation that we battled back from, and, and this is kind of like a way for us to kind of succeed and, and overcome that and come together and, uh, you know, that, we do that through wheelchair basketball, so that's really the most important part. Michael Hudson, been in wheelchair basketball for 15 years. I first got started when I was play, uh, got injured in the hospital, Sean Eastwood Rehab. Um, basketball has given me an outlet for, you know, competing. It's, I've met people all over the country. It's just a good outlet for, it's basically a, a support group. They got AP support groups, but wheelchair is an outlet and a support group for everyone. And I just love playing basketball and look forward to playing for many more years. I'm 39 years old and I enjoy playing, always will. So my name is Tracy Smith and I am Austin's mom and Austin had surgery about a year and a half ago and after the surgery he was feeling pretty down and depressed and just wondering what he was going to do with his life and all of a sudden the Roland Hornets coach seeked us out and asked us if we wanted to join. So Austin and my husband went to um, a game just to go watch and see if it was something that they wanted to do. And within 10 minutes of Austin being there, the coach put Austin in a chair and said, I want you to play. And he started playing the game and it has changed his life tremendously because he went from, what am I gonna do? I'm sad, I'm not gonna be able to walk again to now I have a purpose. And his purpose right now on the team is he's one of the older ones. So he is very much a leader the kids look up to him, they look to him for where to go on the court and what to do and it's just been an amazing experience. We have an amazing coach and I can't say enough about this team. He has um, CP, cerebral palsy, um, was born with it and yes you are. Matthew, don't argue with me, I was there. Please. Thank you. Um, or within a day and a half of being born. We're not positive, but um, we took him down to Florida, to Fort Lauderdale or Lauderdale by the Sea, and did an experimental treatment called um, hyperbaric oxygen therapy. And they pumped in heavy duty oxygen and he would be in there for 40 minutes, an hour, or something like that. And they'd take him down slowly and bring him back up slowly. Um, my personal opinion is is that that has helped with the like some repairing of the brain because we actually found out with his MRI when he was in fifth or sixth grade I think that his brain MRIs now look normal just like yours and mine so either the brain has repaired itself or taken over those dead brain cells we aren't real certain but there is still something obviously causing the lack of ability to walk and the speech and things like that. We've discovered that his is more of a um, metabolic, I guess. It's his genes, part of his chromosomes. Something's not right. Well, kind of, yeah. Something's not right with his chromosomes. Um, they thought at times that it would be like a debilitating disease that we just hadn't gotten the right name on it. But he's gotten stronger. Um, and that's really surprised them. We had been told he'd never walk, he'd never talk, he'd never be able to get out of a power wheelchair. Yeah. Okay. 
and obviously that has changed quite a bit. Oh, and he couldn't get out of the middle circle. Literally, you know, the circle in the middle. Literally, he would stay in half court. Yeah, he would stay in that circle during the entire game. He couldn't get out of it. It was sad. It was very sad. The adults all over have been unbelievable. They've encouraged him when he first started playing, and you know he couldn't keep up, but he'd get down towards the net, and they'd back off or hand him the ball. Even if it was their ball, during the middle of the game, they would give it to him to let him try to shoot so that he gained the confidence. And since then, now he's, he holds his own in there, you know? He fouls and fights for it just as much as some of the other guys, right? It's your family. I mean, that's why it is on the road is those people become your family because you spend so much time with them over a weekend. I, I can't tell you how important this program has been to us. Mm. It's changed our world. No. <laughs> I'm not going to cry. Mm. No, I'm not. No, because I'm thankful for it. So thankful. I can't tell you how thankful we are.